Welcome back to the channel shooters. If you have been here before, thank you for coming back. If you have not, make sure you go down to the description below and find out ways that you can help yourself. That also helped me. That's all I'm gonna say for about that. Now, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the Quantified Performance Match last Saturday at Sawmill. Not to be confused with the previous video, which was over a year ago that I just put out. Let's go ahead and jump into it. Now, dope background, right? I am in Colorado now, just got here, don't have everything set up yet, but as I promised myself a year ago when I started releasing again, no matter what, no matter what it looks like, I'm gonna make sure to get a video out. Now, <laughs> I'm gonna throw a disclaimer out for myself. This is the worst I've ever done in a match. I was completely unfocused. Um, I have multiple things. This has been reminded to me by some close friends and it's important when it comes to mental health to recognize these things. I have so many things going on in my life from moving to college to trying to get the uh, business growing and X amount of other things that don't need to be mentioned that going and shooting a match just a couple days before driving across the country and not shooting a match all year and then trying to get on video and have it, there was a bunch of different things. What it all led to is me being completely unfocused, which is widely, wildly seen in stage one and two. Um, this match wasn't particularly difficult. It was all me. Very rarely is it the gun that fucks up. More often than not, it is the shooter. And that is exactly what was going on here. The biggest issue that was distracting me for this match, for the, especially the beginning, was my new lab mics, for some reason, were not working. Um, they kept muting themselves, and it was just distracting me. So as you'll see, uh, I was not fully aware of what the stage should have been, even though I completely accepted, yes, I know what the stage is. So we're going to go ahead and jump into that. Now, stage one, sitting in a chair, I didn't realize it was supposed to be two passes easy so when they said all right rifle up i thought it was done and we had to do it again that's really all i got to say about that and uh it was a pretty good stage too being able to sit there and plan it out how you're going to move in a chair it was uh kind of different and one thing with uh, that i learned doing this competition specifically was when you have a lot of the same color of the backdrop it does actually help to take your eye off the scope look orient over it and drop your face down, um, especially when depending on your field of view for your optic. This optic has a slightly tighter field of view than I'm used to for these matches, so that's what I kept doing through. Post, post, post. He called hit. Okay, hit then. Go go to five. He hit. Hit. Nope. Hit. Start rifle straight up. Back down. Repeat. Wait, what? You gotta go six targets again. Oh. Fucking. I thought he said once. Yeah, I thought it was one pass. Yep. All right, stand by. Go to four. 
Now stage three, started to feel like I got my act together a little bit. Um, went through stage three, four, five, and uh, six, kinda on six. And six, there were some things that I definitely could have done better. Three, four, five, and six, I definitely started to find my groove and get a little better, um, more focused, which was nice. The After I got the audio figured out and worked out, it was something that wasn't on my mind anymore, and I was able to focus a lot more. So three, four, five, and six definitely were a lot better. The thing that I would have done different on six, I forgot to loosen up my bag on my plate. When you have a bag that's tight on a plate, it's not good. A lot more wobbly, it doesn't absorb recoil as easily or as much, and uh, I forgot to do that. Again, distracted with a million things. Um, and yeah, I paid for it. I, I came out mid-pack, a little above mid-pack, um, but whatever, I had a good time. Big part of the goal for shooting this match was honestly just seeing friends before I took off from the East Coast. that and saw it. He called hit, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it was 46. Sorry. Right. Field of view. I mean, I want to. No, it's going to be good for this. It's for that last one. I'm trying not to touch it. Sputter up. Shooter, do you understand the course of fire? Yeah. Go ahead and make ready. Hold up, hold up, hold up. 
shooter, are you ready? Yep. Stand by. stage seven was super difficult um, you're gonna find me struggling I dropped three no four targets on this one uh, first round impact on the first target felt good moved to the next one and it was actually I only know this because of reviewing the jerk hand footage two mils lower than I thought it was um, when I finished the stage I had very experienced shooters from different diverse backgrounds saying different things some saying shooting high some say shooting low back and forth I was okay I don't know what to believe until I got onto the trigger cam and was able to review things frame by frame, I was like, okay, everything was low, super low. Which, if you guys notice, yeah, I know some of the trigger cam footage is very blurry. I didn't, again, being focused and not paying attention to things, I didn't take the time to focus it. Um, and that's on me because I was so split everywhere else. But what I noticed was like, it could not see it while shooting those impacts in the dirt because of Mirage. That was the biggest problem, especially at that distance. Um, but now, I mean, after reviewing, it was like full two mils low. That was out to 800 yards was the first round impact. The next set, which I could not hit until the very end, was 857 yards. And then the next one after that was uh, eight, no, was 1,000. And if I had calibrated my drop scale or drag scale factor, whichever one you want to call it, um, I would have been able to do that. But the previous day, I didn't even think, I didn't even think about it. Uh, because my dope was obviously good. I trued it in the supersonic, but I didn't cal out that far. And not being able to spot my own shots because I couldn't see it because of Mirage, which is also, um, that's the reason I have for it because of what I remember seeing. But also, it was, uh, it was a pain in the ass. It was a pain in the ass, and it definitely got me on this one. It was very, very frustrating. Stand by. Can't see shit. There it is. Got it. The tam? Can't see. The last stage, um, usually I do really good on the qualifiers. If you don't know what the qualifier is, quantifier performance has this same stage, stage eight. I mean, it could be either one, but what is it, standing? two targets at 100 yards, and then multiple targets um, in mid-range where you have to shoot one, two, three, and then uh, two, one, right back. And then you get from that, from the ladder into the prone, so shoot a long range around 600. That's 635 yard target I just shot the day before, intrude my gun on, and point of aim, point of impact. And then the next day for this comp, as you guys can see, I moved to the dirt because I couldn't see what was going on, and I was high and left. 
way high and left. It was a good correction. Pat myself on the back for that one. But that was wildly different. Um, so that's frustrating. Where the fuck are you? Huh? There it is. It was a good day, but just to give you a little idea on how unfocused I was through this whole thing, and this is a not an excuse, this is a really good point for me to remember because I'm very hard on myself, is the second I was done with this last stage, I was, I got on the phone with Mooters because my, they were, they were having issues, just say that. So I'm on the phone with Mooters for the next hour while getting my stuff packed up, get little old Atticus, my pup, taken care of because he had just been inside for the entire match and make sure he's getting out. And instead of staying back, which I normally would have done to figure out what was going on with my rifle at those distances, I had immediately other priorities to go and get to. So, yeah. Either way, though, I got asked by the match director, Cam. He, uh, great dude. He asked me what I thought of the match, and I was like, well, kick my ass, man. Um, but he was asking overall, like, what do I think of the stages and everything. The stages were excellent. There was a good balance, a lot of transitions, multiple target engagements, uh, small and big targets, which is good, especially because it forces you to shoot differently on each one, give a different respect. Shout out to Veracity Solutions. Give different respects to each target depending on what it demands. And then, uh, yeah, but, I mean, for me overall, it was the most difficult one simply because of everything going on, going on in the back of my mind. So when you guys are shooting, whether you're training or competing or hunting or whatever, pay attention to what's going on in your life. Pay attention to what's actually on your mind. Um, it always makes me think of that scene from Last Samurai with uh, Tom Cruise. It's too many mind. If you have too much going on in your head and you're not – I, I don't want to say unfocused, but you're not relaxed and being free form and letting the flow go through you, then uh, it can be detrimental. So that's what I got for you this week. And it's, that's my mental health note as well. So if you are still here, don't beat yourself up too hard. Understand where you are in life. Understand what's going on. Allow yourself some grace and just take the lesson. Uh, take the lesson and move on. After stage one and two, I was beating myself up. There's kind of this like process I go through. I beat myself up and I figure out what was going on, what was actually getting to me. And then I come through to a point where it's okay, got it, check. That emotion's there. Let's move on. So yeah, that's all I got for you guys this week. I don't know if you can hear that. That's the AC. I'm going to get this studio set up, backdrops, get it looking nice. And uh, yeah, so hopefully you won't have AC problems that you guys will hear and look much better in the background, get my chair going again and start getting out, um, set up a shooting community once a month kind of events out here in Colorado and get some filming up in the mountains done. But for now, I got to unpack. Thank you for coming back. Thank you if you're new. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you guys are on the fence or questioning if you should do a quantified performance, you're wrong. You should get out and do it. Um, reason being, there are only two other match types that are as applicable to real world shooting as quantified performances. One of them is the run and gun, and the other one are anything that makes you ruck distance and shoot, and then ruck distance and shoot. You take those three match types together, you'll be good. And do them like do one or two a year at least, that'll be a good way. I mean, that's six matches right there if you do two a year total. So make sure you guys get out and bang.